wanted just to kind of like share with you um, where the idea of this session has come from. So since I graduated um, from university about 16 years ago, um, what's never sat with me is a fact of kind of, in a way, archaeology is quite um, exclusive as a profession. So for me, the idea that we didn't actually contribute much to society, except perhaps in the pub financially, didn't really sit well with me. Like we didn't change people's lives, we didn't bring people together in any kind of common understanding or impact society in any positive way, or so it seemed to me. Um, and this is something that I've always struggled with um, on, a, on a personal level, as in, I love my subject so much, but actually do we have any positive social impact as archaeologists? So with the onset, with the onset of the recession, um, in archaeology in, in the late 20s. Um, I followed archaeology abroad with a, th a thirst for adventure um, and, uh, and then back to the UK. And through my various experiences I had in during my eight, nine years away, um, I began to see archaeology from a very, very different perspective. Um, I began to see its strengths in community cohesion. I saw it as it forged a sense of identity between groups. And I saw how the dialogue it facilitated really created a common ground with folk that you'd just least expect it to. Um, for example, um, last year, um, through my involvement in a, uh, a church-led homelessness and vulnerable adult ongoing provision, and one of the guys in our group, um, when he found out I was an archaeologist, then he, he, he sought me out and he sat me down. And then we just had this amazing discussion about archaeology. And he told me about his hobby as a, a metal detectorist. We won't go there. Um, but because of that, that was a way into this kind of amazing supportive relationship that we could um, form. So thankfully, developments in archaeology um, are beginning to change and recognising the social responsibility or the potential that we have of enacting change in our society. And the words on the screen um, are just all of these words now seem to be um, throughout kind of um, archaeology speak and archaeology dictionary. These words are always coming across. So when you combine all of these words with the passing of the Social Value Act 2012 and the Wellbeing of Future Generations Act only in Wales 2015, then this encourages a new integrated approach um, towards kind of the attitudes and the choices that opens up in terms of archaeology and the social impact it can have. But, but what are the implications? I mean, are certain ventures contributing, contributing to the exclusivity of archaeology rather than its inclusivity? Are key words such as wider social benefits and public engagement being used only to secure research grants and as an add-on as opposed to actually being at the heart of what archaeology is. Is like a single public talk or a standalone site tour enough of a public engagement, especially on large projects? Should we be, for example, actually be investigating the archaeology of homelessness? Like, is this proper archaeology and is it ethically correct? And what about refugee and forced migration archaeology and documenting the archaeology of the Calais jungle? And do these endeavours really create archaeological knowledge and benefit people and society? And if they do, then who is exactly benefiting from this? And what about us as archaeologists? So when people find out what I do, it's always the same questions. Oh, that's amazing. I always wanted to be an archaeologist. Did you watch Time Team? And I never, ever get bored of being asked those questions because I love sharing my stories. I love sharing the topic. And I love this common ground that comes from, comes from this subject. But is it our duty as archaeologists not only to share the love of our subject, but also to be agents in enacting change? Should we as archaeologists be set in some kind of example? And what about our discipline of archaeology and our archaeological community? Are there changes that we need to happen in our community? Are we, inclus are we as inclusive as we should be? Are we supportive as we, sh enough as we should be? And are we, are we enough respectful for everybody else? Should we be enacting change upon ourselves before or alongside the potential we have to impact a wider society? If archaeology has a need for these groups on the screen, then we obviously, have had, as a discipline, haven't enacted enough change or they wouldn't exist. 
I myself have been subject to some awful bullying in archaeology, which left me unemployed, broken, and with no option for the direction in, in archaeology. And if it wasn't for my faith, by the love and support of my friends and my family, and my inherent love of my subject, I would not be in archaeology and heritage today. And my story is not unique, it's quite, it's a common story. And at the same time, um, I suffer from something called Angolongan spondylitis, which is arthritis of the spine. And like, I can't dig anymore, <laughs> forget that, it's fine. Um, but I found my way in archaeology and heritage, but I've never admitted or told anybody my health. So because if I did that, would actually, would I get a job? Like, would people give me a job? Okay. So this afternoon, through um, some case studies, some various approaches and theories, we're going to explore this concept of archaeology for change. We're going to consider our own discipline from the perspective of self-reflection and a vision of perhaps attainable or utopian equality and diversity and unconditional inclusion. We shall examine whether archaeology has the capacity to tackle social deprivation and if we as archaeologists are to be facilitators in social impact. Are there any inclusive strategies which actually are working? We're going to explore case studies where archaeology has endeavoured to put community at the very heart of archaeology with the aim of positively impacting the community and society as a whole. We're going to see where archaeology is working and succeeding in assisting in the recovery of the lives of individuals. We shall also explore how cultural heritage is being used as a tool for social inclusion and we shall begin to try and disassociate this word volunteer from an almost ingrained reference to white, privileged, retired middle class individuals. So as we go, so as we go through this session, um, there's some questions to kind of consider as we go through, and then maybe at the end we'll try and see if we can come to some kind of answer or discussion way forward from them. So can archaeology be used positively? And can archaeology positively impact those who live in it, bringing people in the community together? Is societal change our responsibility as archaeology and as individuals? Should we be looking to change our own attitudes within our own archaeological discipline? But is there a, white, a right way of engagement that doesn't compromise ethics or use engagement you know, as a means to an end for your own research goals? And also, archaeology isn't just for those easy members of society. But fundamentally, the question is, can archaeology be used to encourage positive contemporary societal change? So this is where I go kind of a little bit hippie on you. So, for example, for me, I don't see us any different to the wandering, paleolithic, hunter-gather communities and societies of Europe. Because we, moved, we move around, like we shared, we fed each other, we lived in communities, we fought each other, we raised families, we messed up, we overcame problems and we worked together. So it may be a rather simplistic way of thinking about society, but I'm actually not sure that it really is a simplistic way of looking at it. 